This is a Logic Pro X tutorial using all the Logic samples, loops, and sounds that you can find for free inside Logic Pro X. This is just a small snippet of content from a more full extensive tutorial that I have made for free. You can find a link in the description. It is a full Logic Pro X tutorial that goes over everything for beginners. So if you're interested in learning more from a beginner's perspective, please visit that full Logic Pro X tutorial link in the description. For now, we'll focus on this video, which is starting with the loop sounds and how you can build a song from scratch without being a musician. You don't actually need to play anything. All you need to know is how to use a computer and have some type of musical creativity in your head, but you actually don't need to play anything because we're just gonna be using free Logic samples and loops from the Loop Browser Library. For your convenience, if you want, I did put a free download to the Logic Pro X session that I'll be using in this tutorial if you want to use that and follow along with it, please just visit that link and download it for free. In this top right icon, we have this loop browser. And so here we can browse all the sounds that Logic Pro X offers us. And Logic Pro X gives you hundreds of sounds. So we can quickly filter by genre. Let's say we're interested in modern R&B. So right away, we get all of these loops here that are modern R&B. And let's say we actually just want an instrument well, actually, I'm actually just looking for bass. So let's click bass here. So for simplicity's sake, let's just use this one at the top. I'm going to click and then drag right over to our session and let go. It's going to say the added audio file contains tempo information. Do you want to import this into the project? You know what? That's fine. We can also import that. And you can see our tempo was 90, but now it's 129. And if we actually wanted to just go back to 90, we can go double click here go back to 90 and it's going to change the tempo of the audio track that was given to us throughout the video as well i'm going to mention some shortcuts here and there but i'm also going to put all these shortcuts in their own section at the end of the video so we can have them all in one place if you want to reference them at a later date for example we can hit spacebar right now to quickly hear what this sounds like So, not so great, but you know, we're starting to make some progress. You can also zoom in easily if you have a trackpad by doing the typical zoom, or you can just go at the top right here and slide this to zoom in or zoom out. So after a listen, let's say we didn't like that. All we have to do is click in and press the backspace button. And then we've deleted that track. And we can go over to the loop browser and start clicking loops. <laughs> So I'm just gonna go quickly through some of them now, see which ones I like, and then I'm gonna paste them into our session. Now remember, we also filtered just bass at the top. So we, if we don't want bass at all, we can click out of bass, and let's say we just want piano, let's go piano. Let's choose breathless piano. It's quite nice, so I'm gonna click that and paste it into our session. For this time, let's not import tempo. Let's keep it at 90. So now we have our loop browser kind of awkwardly in this middle here. We can click on it and drag it anywhere as we please. Alternatively, we can click on it and click semicolon, and that will bring the track to where the cursor is. A quick way to do this, if I go back, Whenever we press enter, the cursor will go back to position number one. This is a really nice quick shortcut. So if you press enter, it will go back to playhead number one. And then if you press enter semicolon, the track will go to one. So that's a great quick shortcut that I use a lot to get everything back at position one. So let's have a listen to this. Kind of sounds a bit creepy, a bit eerie. And if we don't like it, we can always go to the side here and find other tracks that we might want to add in. But for simplicity of the video, I'm going to keep that there and then I'm going to go look for a drum loop. So what I'm going to do to want to get to drum loops is I'm going to want to go back to all genres and then I'm going to want to go to all drums. So here inside of all drums, you can see I have tons of available loops. Now I can play through a few. So you can see what I mean. And then if I keep scrolling, I have some in yellow here, then some more in blue, 
some more in yellow. So what does that mean? Basically, the ones in blue means they're actually audio files, which looks like the one we have in our project here. And then the ones in yellow are actually drum files, and we can change those a little bit, and I'll show you how to do that now. So let's say we want to start building our song, and let's say we like this one down here called Aiden Verse. So I'm going to click and drag Aiden Verse into our project. And as you can see, it's already created a new track for me called Portland Aiden. But if I go back to the right here and I look at Aiden Verse, the tempo to this track was 100. And as I pasted it into my session here, the tempo has automatically changed to 90. So if I press enter to get the playhead cursor back to position one and play through, it will all be synced up nicely because the tempo is at 90 and everything is automatically snapped to the tempo of 90. So let's have a listen. Great, that sounds actually pretty cool. What you'll notice is the drums keep going and our breathless piano here stops. So there's a couple things we can do. We can either loop the breathless piano to match the length of the drums, or we can shorten the amount of drums. And in this case, I'm actually going to just loop the breathless piano. And so if I hover over the top right, you'll see this little arrow circle, and I'm gonna click that and drag it. And it's gonna to snap to the end of position nine, then I can drag my cursor anywhere I want, press spacebar, and hear it out. So it sounds pretty good. So let's say I want to change a little bit of the dynamics of the drums. For this breathless piano, I don't actually have much availability to, to change that because it's an audio file. But as I was saying, these yellow files, you do have the option to change a bit of the dynamics. And that's the flexibility of Logic Pro X and one of the big benefits, especially for songwriters and producers that want to change the dynamics of preset drums. So let's click into the drums. And you'll notice the bottom has changed and it has this little grid here simple loud complex soft and we can actually see a drum set we're gonna have to click this icon to make total space so now it's a bit cleaner and you can see i have all these options of beat presets on the left and then i can click and drag this big yellow thing to make the drums more complex and loud or i can go down here to make it more complex and soft or over here to make it simple and soft and you'll notice, if I leave it down here, look at the dynamics of the drums now. Look at how much space is between the beats and the kicks. If I go over to complex and loud, look what will change. The signal is louder and there's more things happening. And so let's listen to that. So that is much more complex. Let's go down here to simple and soft. Now let's take a listen. Much more simple, much more soft. So that's exactly what this does. We can find a nice happy medium in the middle here. But let's say we're missing something. Let's say we want to clap. Well, we simply press this clap. But let's say we want a tambourine. It's as simple as adding tambourine. I do like a clap, so let's click clap and see what that sounds like. So that's sounding pretty groovy. We can also add these cymbals. We can add toms. We can change the style of tom hits, we can also change the style of kick and snare hits. So you can get quite custom into how you want your drums to sound without being a drummer by just clicking and seeing these different patterns that you like and then having a listen to see what it sounds like. So that's kind of sounding a bit jungly. So I'm gonna add the hi-hats back. I'm gonna do a different pattern, maybe a pattern three on kick and snare. That's starting to sound more groovy. So I like that. So now that we got our drum track in place and our breathless piano that we kind of like, um, you can go, you can extend this quite far and you can bring as many loops as you'd like to into this project. You never even have to play an instrument to make a song. We can always be going to the top right of each track and hovering to make these tracks longer or shorter. For example, this as well. And if we want to add more loops, we just go to the top loop browser Let's say we want to add some synths. Well, let's say we want to add some acoustic guitar. You know, it's as simple as that. We want to add some vibes. 
It's this lounge vibes. What does that sound like? Well, we just click and drag. It's going to automatically change to our tempo of 90. Let's have a play and see what this sounds like. <laughs> Obviously, this is starting to sound a bit outrageous. So if we don't like that, let's just double click, and hit backspace. Okay, let's go back to here and let's say, actually, you know, we want some bass. I want some bass and let's say this subsonic bass is in the key of F sharp. Well, our key is in E minor. So that's not really gonna work for us. We wanna find some key in E minor. So we can go here and we can type, press key and that's gonna filter our keys for us alphabetically. And so we can go scroll down to E and we can scroll through bass that might work for our track. And part of the fun is going through a lot of these loops and seeing what might fit for your track. And sometimes it does take a long time. So I'm not gonna go through all of these, but let's just say we want this agile funk bass. Let's click and drag that in. You'll notice it's a quite shorter. I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna do our little shortcut. I'm gonna press enter and then semicolon. And that's gonna flip our track right to the beginning. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Kinda cool, right? Let's loop this to the end. Let's press enter to get back to one and let's have another play. and then we're actually starting to build the song. And if you wanna do these quick mix things, you can do that as well. And that's just a little tidbit that I like to do while I'm building a song. As you can see, all these volumes here are the same. And so typically we want our bass not to be so loud. So I'm gonna lower this a little bit. You know what, drums might just be a little lower. And I'm gonna put the piano quite low like this. Let's hear what that sounds like. Maybe the bass is, yeah, the bass could probably be a bit louder because it's kind of quite intense and upfront and I like that. But I'm not gonna get into mix engineering so much. As you can see, we can take this even further and bring in many more loops. We can also bring in external packages and samples from other libraries like Splice, for example. But we don't have to, we can still remain inside Logic and then continue to use all these free samples to build a song arrangement. If you're interested in the next step and taking this song arrangement a little further that we have done in this video, please do check out that extensive free Logic Pro X tutorial. There's a link in the description it's also on YouTube. I'm a singer-songwriter myself, so if you're curious to what my demos sound like or what I sound like as a singer-songwriter, I'll leave a couple links to my music in the description below. And if you're interested in more content around music, personal growth, and entrepreneurship, please feel free to subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.